All right, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, ah, oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I'm feeling it now, yeah. This is going to be phenomenal. Wait, guys, there's no microphone. Support WrestleTalk. Visit WrestleTalk.com. Four huge NXT call-ups. Big Cass returns to WWE and some amazing feuds and matches are coming in 2018 on the blue brand. I am Luke Owen. Vote in the poll above my head to let me know your thoughts on this show as I review the 17th of April 2018 edition of SmackDown Live in about four minutes. AJ Styles opened the show to cut a promo on Shinsuke Nakamura, challenging him to a fight. This instead brought out Rusev Day to thunderous cheers and the two had a match that only went a few seconds. AJ locked in the calf crusher and English ran in for the DQ, which brought out Daniel Bryan for the save and the two baby faces cleared house. I smell a tag team match player. <laughs> That's a completely original joke. I hope no one steals it. Paige here. Dang it. Backstage, Paige channeled her inner Teddy Long and made the tag match for the main event. The now single Shelton Benjamin celebrated going solo by laying out an open challenge to anyone in the back. This brought out Randy Orton, but he was interrupted by SmackDown's newest star, Jeff Hardy. The Viper looked a little perturbed by all this, setting up a US championship feud between the two. Hardy and Benjamin then had a cracking little TV match, which saw Jeff win with the Swanton Bomb. The Miz cut a cell phone promo, announcing he was actually in LA with his wife and child, but will be back on SmackDown Live next week to pick up his feud with Daniel Bryan. It was also mentioned in passing that Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose have been drafted to SmackDown Live, because if they were on the same show as the Riot Squad, that would have caused a time paradox. The result of which could cause a chain reaction that would unravel the very fabric of the space-time continuum and destroy the entire universe. Granted, that would have been the worst case scenario. The destruction could have been localized to merely our own galaxy. Wait, where was I? Ahead of the greatest Royal Rumble match next Friday, Harper defeated Jay Uso in a very short match. Afterwards, while the Bludgeon Brothers beat down the Usos, Naomi ran down from the back to plead for their lives. This added a level of realism to the feud between the Usos and two men who wear masks who carry round giant mallets. And the Hammer Brothers allowed temporary mercy. Well, it's been a few minutes, better have another superstar shakeup. Samoa Joe made his SmackDown Live debut and beat Sin Cara in a short match. It's great to see Joe on this this show, and he'll have an easier time in the main event that isn't dominated by Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Braun Strowman. He cut a promo on Roman after the match, but also set up feuds with Brian Orton and Styles. Yes, please. The single greatest promo to hype jewel branded pay-per-views then aired before we got the announcement that NXT Sanity would be joining SmackDown Live. While this is awesome, it's surprising that Nikki Cross isn't joining them. Backstage, Daniel Bryan was hyping his tag team match with AJ Styles when Big Cass returned to WWE television calling Brian Little Man. This creates some interesting intertwining storylines, with Brian feuding with The Miz and Big Cass at the same time. The fabulous SmackDown Live Women's Champion Carmella then came out for a melebration, which was quickly interrupted by Charlotte Flair, who said she was only champion because of the Iconics. Guess I'll have to get used to calling them Iconics now. To the surprise of no one, Iconics came out and cut a fantastic promo on Charlotte. They're really effective heels, falling over themselves to laugh at their actually not that funny jokes. It was wonderful stuff. Charlotte then attacked Peyton Royce and Billy Kay when Becky Lynch made the save. I smell a tag team match player. Oh, no, wait, it's a singles match. Which the Queen won with the figure eight. The crowd cared so much they chanted for Y2J. After the match, Carmella and Iconics beat down Becky Lynch and Flair until Asuka ran down to make the save. Still no real character development from that streak ending, eh? It was then revealed that Galanderson, The Bar, and R-Truth have all been drafted to SmackDown Live and Andrade Cien Almas has been given the NXT call-up along with Zelina Vega. All very good choices. Apart from truth, obviously. And in the main event, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan team to take on Rusev Day in a match that wasn't as fun as you'd think it would be. Their heels beat down AJ for a really long time. And then Bryan got the hot tag and ran wild. Just as it looked like Bryan was going to get the win, Shinsuke Nakamura hit AJ Styles with the phenomenal ball arm and Big Cass ran in to kick Bryan in the face. On the ramp, Renee tried to interview Nakamura, but he again told her he doesn't speak English. So that was this week's Smackdown Live in about four minutes. Make sure you voted in the poll above my head to give your thoughts using this rating system from top to bottom. Smack damn, smack-tastic, smack bang in the middle, 
Ellsworthy, and no Nicky Cross insanity. Come on, guys, that was an open goal. Like Raw on Monday, it would have been difficult to have a boring show with the surprises of the shakeup and NXT call-ups. And this was a fun show. I am more excited about the roster on SmackDown than I am on Raw, and we should be in for a really fun year of feuds and matches. Based on that, this week's SmackDown Live is a low smack-tastic. Ollie and I gave some in-depth thoughts on Monday Night Raw and their superstar shakeup and NXT call-ups. Click the video over there to check that out and click the video playlist above it for more awesome wrestling content.